Hey guys, it's Jake. Welcome back to another video. This is kind of like a sequel to a previous video I made on how to use my Siegs Vector mockups, how to use Adobe Illustrator, how to use them both to design clothes. I since then updated my Vector mockup pack and I added a bunch of new mockups, different jackets and hoodies and shirts. And I think it's fair to make another longer form tutorial uh, that can use these new elements. I've also made other complementary digital assets like my modifier pack, my stitch presets, my texture add-ons, my pattern pack. So I'll be talking about some of those too. That's not the main point of the video. The main point is to design the clothing. You don't need all the extra stuff, but I will use the extra stuff just to sprinkle it in, just to show you what's possible, what's available, right? So now we are in Adobe Illustrator. I created this artboard, this file for you for this video, just to practice and play around with stuff. We have an agenda here, so we'll go through it ever so gradually. So the mock-up pack overview. This is the Sieg's Vector mock-up pack V2 updated. I added 89 new elements. The original mock-up pack are these guys right here. And then everything outside of this box has been added to the mock-up pack. If you have the original 23 vector mock-up pack and you don't have the updated, email me info at siegs.com with your order number and I will send you an updated version of this mock-up pack. If you don't have the original mock-up pack and you don't have either mock-up pack, then um, I can't give you a free the, the, the free updated file. So lots of pants, sweatpants, work pants, denim, cargo, different types of uh, different types of lay flats for hoodies with the hood up, hood down, different shirts, lettermans, vests, puffers, cardigans, long sleeves, shorts, bags, hats, like side view of a hoodie, just kind of nice. You know, another new hat, different glasses. Okay. We're also going to be looking at my Sieg's mock-up modifiers, which are interchangeable elements like different pockets that are pre-made, a double hood, drawstrings, buttons, zippers, which were actually really fun to make, wrist sleeves, I'm not sure what they're actually called, but I just call them wrist sleeves, pocket tops, oblique pockets, hoodie pockets. This is my add-ons pack, it has rhinestones, distression holes, paint splatters, an acid wash effect it's like smoke or like fog quilting texture and some gross uh, like oil stains that you can layer on top of each other to make some pretty cool effects and in the add-on pack you do get this open arm hoodie mock-up uh, for free I just threw it in there as well as brush library other library stitch presets so now I can draw a line I can click any of these, uh, let's zoom in a little bit. So there's a satin stitch, different overlock stitches, a chain stitch, the stitch presets. In case you're you know, tired of manually drawing stitches on your garment, it's up to you. Also, my computer is kind of slow right now because I'm screen recording and uh, using Audition for audio and Illustrator. So exploring the mockups structure. So all the mockups generally have a colored, also they're all grouped together, you know? You can double click them to isolate them. So then you can't edit anything else aside from you double clicking on the grouped item. And you can double click to get out of it or you can select it and press Command Shift G to ungroup it. But that really ungroups it. Command Z to undo or you can just click, right click, ungroup, and they're back to their original. But when I ungroup them, these aren't grouped yet. So I'm just gonna select this, Command G group, and do the same for this one. Right, so my mockups are composed of a base uh, shape. That is the entire outline of the entire mockup. And then everything else, all the other lines are added, drawn on top of it. So if you want to change a color, let's select it, you know, come in. These are grouped together, but we just want to select the body, the base. We don't want to select any of these stitching lines. We don't want the our blue highlight lines to be on that. We just want command for the direct selection tool. Go up here. You can also press A. 
the direct selection tool. V is the normal selection tool. So you can press A for direct selection, or if you're on the normal selection, you can hold command. See that? And it switches from direct uh, selection tool to direct selection. So click that, hold, hold command down again, hold shift, and you can click another color at the same time. Go to the color picker over here on the left. And now we can, can be whatever color we want. So let's do like a beige cream. It's like a light brown kind of color. And there's still some gray there. Oh yeah, there's there's a few lines on here that have a fill over here. This is a, called a fill. This outline here is called a stroke. See that fill and stroke. So the fill, there are fills on this lines that shouldn't be there. So to get rid of that, uh, you just make sure whatever you want to manipulate is in front, which would be this fill. See how you can switch them. One is in front of the other. Have this be in front and then click this cross right here. This like none, this like cancel out. And that gets rid of them. So that's how to do color. Well, let's say you want to, you want to color this. Also, if you're doing black, it's best to do like an off black, not a total black color, just so you can see the, the outlines, the outlines of your mock-up. But let's say we want this to be like a ringer T. We want specific areas on it to be colored. So P for pen tool is one of the most important tools in Illustrator. So this is already a line and there's two ends to it. So we can use our P pen tool to click the dot and you'll see there's like a slash and you're going to continue the stroke and you're going to connect this shape. And now that's a brand new shape layered on top of our already made mockup. So there's no fill to it. The stroke's black, but there's no fill to it. So let's do like a faded blue color like that. We'll do the same thing to this side. And I don't know the exact color, but what I could do is with this selected, the shape that we want the blue fill to be in, we can go over to our first shape, press I for the eyedropper tool. We can click it and it'll take its properties from whatever we clicked on. If the stroke, if the outline was, you know, right now it's at two, let's say the outline was at 10, really thick line. If we click this, oops, oops, command, we've got a direct select it. If we click this blue, then press I and I drop it, it's gonna take that stroke. It's gonna take the properties of the shape that you use the eyedropper tool on, right? So then we're gonna go to the collar. Usually ringer tees have the collar and the sleeves a different color. And I'm just gonna connect these two because I know these are already lines that are there. Why redraw them if they're already there? Go down here, eyedropper, click it. And now it's a ringer tee. And actually to make it look better, be for the back. So this, we're gonna have to draw a little bit. So with our pen tool, we click somewhere and hold and drag, and then you make that trajectory line. You can hold shift to make a smoother arc, make it more symmetrical. And we can now make it like that, but it's also on the inside of the shirt, maybe to give it a little bit more depth, we can make the color a, li a little bit darker, a little bit darker. And I think that looks a lot better. It looks a little bit more realistic, but still being like vectory and cartoony. So that's how to manipulate color. Selection tool, if it's grouped, click, color picker, change the color. So now we have clipping masks. So for clipping masks, let's say we wanted to, let's make this a white color. And then we take this guy. So this graphic is behind the hoodie. To bring it in front, we can select it, right click, arrange, bring to front. Assuming on the right side here, 
everything's on the same layer, which it is. I can turn the layer off and everything goes away. So Z to do zoom tool, click on my touchpad, and drag left and right to zoom in. That's what I like to do at least. Click our graphic, use the transform box, put it near a corner to rotate it, hold and drag. Let's say I want it like that. I want to put it uh, here. So to do a clipping mask, because we want to get rid of this area. We don't, we, this would be on the back side of the sleeve. We want to just show this for the sake of just what the mock-up looks like, just the visual. So we look at our pen tool, press P on the line. So you, you want to draw a shape around what you want to keep, what you want to be shown. And then you can messily draw on around the entire rest of it. Close the shape. Press V for select tool. As long as you know your the shape you just drew is still selected, hold shift, click on your artwork. So now they're both selected. Right click, make clipping mask. You can also press command seven. That will also create the uh, clipping mask. So there's a little gap here. So I can press my hold command for the direct selection tool and press the very edge of this to select that line. Then I can press shift C to get my anchor point tool. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but and then click it, then drag. And you're just dragging that, uh, that line, the clipping mask parameter. So that's how you put something on the side of a garment. That's how you get rid of something. You know, if you're doing, you know, uh, uh, for example, let's go back to, let's open up our modifiers. So this is the modifier pack. I got pockets and zippers, and zipper teeth and drawstrings. Uh, we'll pull a couple of these for some of these examples over here. But right now, as we're working on clipping masks for this white hoodie, let's grab uh, this pocket and drag it here. I want it to be the same color as the hoodie. So I'll deselect this with Command Shift A to deselect everything. Hold Command to click on the gray. I for eyedropper. Click the white of the hoodie, now it's the same color. So we shall rotate this, drag it to where we want. P for pen tool. On the outline, we want to draw around what we want to keep. Doesn't have to be pretty, you can just, just draw a shape around it. V for select tool, hold shift, select the pocket, command seven to clipping mask. And now you have a pocket there. And if you want to make it even more realistic, kind of, I guess, you could, you know, shift C, grab this anchor point, drag it up a little bit, because if a pocket's sewn onto the sleeve, it's going to be, you know, protruding out a little bit on the side profile, or on the front profile, sorry. And then click anywhere to deselect that, press P again, click this edge where the black line ends, click it over here, we just made a line, make the stroke black. It made it white for some reason. My laptop's a lot faster than this guy's. He's running too many things right now. And then increase the stroke weight right here. Um, to two, but there's still some white on the outside of it. So come uh, shift C, grab the outside line, just drag it behind that stroke. And now it's jutting out a little bit, which I think looks a little bit better. So clipping masks are to show, if you want to show a portion of a piece of artwork or a graphic, you know, you put it on the slide of a garment, or maybe you are, um, here's another example. Let's say we have this rabbit and we want to print it or embroider it on the front of this shirt. So first, let's ungroup this, Command Shift G. Actually, I'm gonna move this out of the way. Command Shift G again, because the front and back were grouped. So let's Command Shift G again to ungroup all these items. So I'm gonna select these two buttons. I'll select all the buttons and this line, and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna bring to front. I'm doing that 
because if this graphic is going to be printed, then those elements should be on top of it. So let's resize this, hold shift to keep it uniform. Um, like there. Oops, these buttons aren't filled. So I'm just going to select them all. Eyedropper eye, click the shirt. I want it to be the same color, same stroke. Now they're filled. So another way clipping masks could be used for clothing stuff for the vectors is same idea. Click along the line, draw a circle around this, not a circle, but a shape. I need two of these guys. So I'm actually going to, I'm going to hold option, click this and just drag it away. That duplicates it. So I'm going to click on the shape we just drew. Shift, click on this bunny, Command-7. Drag this, line this up as best I can. It's a little off, that's okay. P, pen tool, Shift to keep a straight line. Drag along this edge, this shape. I'm just going to move this guy real quick. Click that. Wait, where did this line go? Okay. So I just press Command A to select everything just to see the line. And then I deselected that, that shape, make clipping mask. So there were some artifacts there. There we go. There's just a lot of anchor points and vectors on this artboard so it's just being a little slow and it's showing things that don't need to be there so we're zooming i'm going to line this guy up we're going to line this guy up And realistically, you know, if this is on two different pieces of fabric, maybe the graphic won't line up exactly. So since it's split in two now, we can maybe shift this maybe down a little bit just to show that it could be like a little messed up. You know, if you want to do that, if you want to make it that air quote realistic for the mock-up or just to show the manufacturer that it is split into two different items. So this isn't on the agenda, but I just remembered it's very important. We're talking about image trace. Image trace is one of my favorite tools. So you can pick any picture from the internet. It could be any number of colors, could be a real life picture. It depends. Once you understand how this function works, then you could you know, think of ideas on how to use it. It is so useful. But we, I found this graphic on Pinterest. So I'm gonna click on it and the image trace box lights up. And we're going to expand advanced. So let's start with uh, three colors. So sometimes it takes a while. And it did black, white, and pink. So I'm going to turn preview off because I don't want it to load and generate it after every time I adjust any setting. So turn that off. The settings I like to use are noise all the way down, corners less. You want it to be round nice soft edges, and then high path. So lots of anchor points to really get details and get every chunk in there. Because if it's on low, it's gonna look like a polygon. It's gonna look like that, that fucking, that, that Pokemon that got, that gave children seizures. You know what I'm talking about? Poly, poly something. And the paths, I like to be high, uh, just so we can get every detail. If it's too low, it'll look like a polygon or like Porygon, that Pokemon that gave a bunch of kids seizures. When that episode came out with those flashing lights. You don't want that. You want high path, right? So more than three colors. I know there were a handful of colors in this. So let's just do 10. And then we can hit preview. Okay. So we have all the colors. But the edges look very jagged. See right here? And right here. So let's click it again. 
I think I accident I think I accidentally clicked it, held it, and moved it. That's why. Yeah, if you move the graphic anywhere, like click it and hold it and move, it'll regenerate, which will take time. Yeah, see, I moved it a little bit. So it's jagged, which means we have too many paths. So let's turn this down to like here. Okay, a little better. Um, I'll do a little bit more. Let's turn preview off. I'm going to turn this down a little bit more. Okay, on realistic artwork, high. But since this is vectorized, simple, simple vector shape. Let's keep, let's do like 30. And then colors, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do six colors. And let's turn the noise up a little bit. For example, low noise, see this little orange dot right here? I don't know if you can see it on the screen. It should be gone now. Yeah, so if there's really tiny details and specs, the noise of one, um, the lower the number, the more detailed and fine little artifacts and like little vector shapes will be generated or matched. So I'm happy with this. It's not perfect. You see, there's a little bit of bleeding from the yellow here. I don't know what that shape is. These are broken apart, but that's fine. So it's just a picture now. To get it into vector form, you go to keep it selected. You go to object, expand. Okay. And now the, I can select individual individual things. So there's a, I don't want the black command, click the black, delete, delete the black there, and then delete this white and the black right there. And now we have a vector shape taken from a Pinterest picture. And I could, uh, you know, right click, Arrange, bring to front. Hold shift to keep proportion. Hold option to have it grow and shrink from the center of the graphic, which is very useful. Put that there. The original background was black, so let's, you know, maybe we'll do like a, we'll, yeah, yeah, like an off black kind of, yeah, like that. There you go. That could be how you make a graphic too. Um, let's see, still on clipping masks. I want to show you guys this. So this is an artwork that I'm using for an actual collection garment that should be done fairly soon. Let's add it to this shirt. So right click. The reason all the graphics are behind the garment is because I brought the graphics in the software first before these mockups. So that's why they're just layered. Uh, behind the mockups. So there's already a clipping mask on this. I'm going to right click release clipping mask. And then uh, hold shift clicked anywhere on the graphic to deselect it. So I just have this the clipping mask parameter line. And I'm just going to delete that because I don't need that anymore. So I have this graphic. This is like a it was this was an image traced um, mirror. I think I had mid journey. I think I had an AI design this mirror for me and then I image traced it. I got this. But let's say I want it right here and I want this dangly bit to be right below the collar, almost like a necklace. So now I'm going to zoom in, use my pen tool and kind of crudely, it doesn't have to be incredibly accurate. I mean, if you, it's good if it's accurate, but just for the sake of the video and my computer being slow as molasses, I'm just going to do it like this, just to show you guys the uh, the vision, the vibe. So tracing all the way around, got our shape, V select, hold shift, click our graphic, command seven, clipping mask. And now maybe you want to do an all over print, or maybe you want to do a sublimation of a part of a graphic or a repeating pattern graphic on a garment. So that's one way to do it too. I mean, I wouldn't wear this, you know, this isn't, if you think it's cool, it's great. Maybe put a logo here or something right in the center. Um, or maybe some, I don't know, reflective print or vinyl behind it. Maybe make it look like an actual mirror, whatever you want to do, but that's how to do clipping mask. 
So for adding and removing seams stitches. So some of these, as you notice, this one has some stitches on the wrist cuff, the pocket, the waistband, the collar, but not on the shoulder. This one does have it on the shoulder. And these are just, you know, zooming in. V for select tool, holding command for direct selection tool. These are just three individual lines. So maybe if you don't want this type of stitch, maybe you can delete one line and say, hey, I want, you know, this torso material to be fabric. And then, because it looks like now with the stitch line on the right side of this hard line, which would be where the fabrics would be touching each other, uh, it looks like this sleeve shape is on top of the torso because the stitches are on this side in a way, you know? And you could even, you know, depending on what you want, click it, hold option, which is like, oops, click it again, sorry, just so I just want this selected, hold option, and that duplicates it while you drag, and maybe you want a double, like a double stitch like that. So you can make any stitch with the pen tool, press P, hold shift to do a straight line if you want to do that. Um, these are already dashed, but let's turn that off so I can show you how to do that uh, right here. So you make a line, let's thicken it up a little bit just to show you, and let's zoom in a little bit. So when you have a line, you come over here to stroke properties and there's a lot of stuff you can do in here. So I could do, you could do a cap, which is the ends. So right now it's blocked. You could round them. See how they're rounded now. Um, or projecting. I don't know what that is. Oh, wait. Okay. So this is, uh, the square ends right at the anchor point. This, projecting kind of pushes it out past. See how like the transform box, the blue lines right there and it goes past that. So for corners, let's click this. Let's just draw a little kink. For corners, you can do a rounded corner like that, or you can do a bevel like that, or you can just keep it sharp and normal. Dashed line, dashed line. Um, you can play around with this dash point and then the uh, stroke point. But depending how, you know, dense or far away you want it, you know, you can turn the stroke down, which makes it thinner. And then you could add more dashes to make it look like stitches as well. And that's how to make your own stitches. That's how to use the pen tool, manipulate it to simulate what stitches would look like. Fortunately, I also have a tool that is great for this. If we go to the brushes properties over here, if you don't see that on yours, go to window find brushes here. You can find image trace here as well. You can find uh, the color, you know, color picker and stuff. So any thing you need is really in this window, uh, this window tab, as well as object can do a lot of fun stuff with uh, envelope distorts fun path offset. Um, you know, what? before I get into the stitches, let me just actually show you that real quick. I have an example graphic that would be good for it. We'll select our graphic object envelope to store it, make with warp. And now we have a bunch of these tools. Actually, I think I, yeah. So these are all the different like states, different effects you could do. So arch, um, to up like that, you know, arch keeps the sides flat while arc, you know, keeps the sides open. Look at the transform box. Look at this, look at the shape of that flag. You can bend it and then you can, you know, manipulate it with these parameters, you know, more horizontal, more vertical, if you want, you can really make a lot of neat stuff, a lot of cool logo and text manipulation with just this envelope distort, you know, tool alone, but I'm not going to do that. Um, let's see if you want to make like a patch yourself, let's make this uh, an outline object path offset path and now it can create a perfectly spaced symmetrical you know line maybe you want to make a circular patch so you make these two lines that are perfectly you know spaced and next to each other you can select the inside line go to stroke do a dashed line and now it looks like a circular patch you know um you could also do 
get pen tool again, I can make a pretty wonky shape. And do path offset again. And it'll be perfectly aligned and spaced around side that awkward shape. Because I know manually drawing um, around weird shapes is annoying and tough. Uh, so this, this could be good for like applique patches. If you have the pic if you have a picture of like, you know, a letter or this, this, this horse or the skeleton or something. Um, oh yeah, I had the skeleton. I'm kind of getting off track here, but um, I had the skeleton because I wanted to show you image trace on this one specifically. Um, so it's black and white. We can go to preset and we can click um, sketched art. And it'll, it'll remove the background for you, which is really just this, ignore color. So if the background's white, ignore color, eyedropper, and you click it, and then it'll ignore that color. And I can adjust it. I don't have to turn preview off because it's a very simple file. It can generate this pretty quickly. And I can just manipulate all these. See how like, like speckled it looks? I can turn the paths down to smoothen it out. Then go up to object, go to expand, and now you have a vector. Yeah. If you want to fill it with color, you click, uh, you double click it to get in there, select this line, and then you can add color. Uh, well, no, it's not, it's not what I want to do. Okay, whatever. Okay. All right, so for the stitches, let's get back to this. So let's remove Command and Shift, select those, delete those. So let's go to our brushes, brush library, other library, go to our Sieg's stitch presets. And now we have a bunch of presets. So I can click and draw a line, give it a little bend. And now I can make it, um, I can make it a chain stitch. I can do a satin stitch. I could do this quadruple stitch. I could do this stitch, like what, the one we just had a minute ago. Just a line, I could do a double line. Um, the original stitch, I believe it's right here. Yeah, so this is, this one is manually drawn. This is the brush preset. You could do overlock stitches. And I have other videos on my Instagram and TikTok showing, you know, quickly how to use specifically these brushes. I'm not going to go through every single one of them. But, uh, you know, let's do this. Let's say we want a double chain stitch here. So we do shift C for the anchor point tool. Maybe drag it a little bit further but it's overlapping. See how it's coming over that line? So we get our pen tool, we do a clipping mask. And we wanna see the, this whole part, but just not that little sticking out part. So we just draw a little shape around this, have it selected, hold shift, select that too, make clipping mask or command seven, and there you go. And if you want to have a chain stitch as your shoulder seam stitch, then now you can. It's also good for, let's make an applique letter real quick. So T for text tool, click on the artboard or anywhere on the page. I'm gonna type in just a lowercase s, command shift A, deselect everything, V select, click it again. Go to our fonts ever so slowly because of this damn computer. Uh, I like this font, Monsieur Le Doulet Regular. Regular. <laughs> right? Click it, object, expand, because it, it was a it was in the text, you know, function format. Now it's a vector shape because I expanded it. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more. Uh, actually, I'm gonna make it bigger first, right? And then now, where is it? I'm gonna, is it this one? Uh, I'm gonna remove the fill, or I'll make it. I'll make it. Uh, let's make it cream actually. Maybe like a cream color. Okay. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, 
and uh, I like the weight of the stroke. Actually, maybe I could, you know, reduce it a little bit. Okay. And now that looks like a uh, an applique patch with stitching on the main base fabric too. But if we didn't want that, then we could do... That was the one we just had. I think it might be... This one? Yeah, this one. So maybe you just want the stitches on the inside of the applique graphic. So it's a big cursive applique S. And what do we do to cut the top off? We clipping mask. Good. We draw around it. Press V, keep it selected, hold shift, click the graphic, command seven clipping mask. And now it looks like the hood is on top of the applique S. Right. Um, anchor points. Okay. So let's go up here. So everything in Adobe Illustrator is Illustrator is a vector based software. So what that means is like Photoshop is pixel based. If you get a graphic and increase it, decrease it, it's going to stay pixelated. And if you make it too small, it's going to fuck it up. And then if you try to make it large again, it's going to be just a mess. Gobble the gook of pixel It's gross. So in Illustrator, it's vector based, which means you can increase and decrease the size and scaling of everything and it won't lose quality. Now, as you can see, uh, there's no pixels. It's still a smooth line, but the strokes are still at like a stroke of two, I think, like right here. So they stay the same size, even though the graphic is now smaller. To mitigate that, you would go to object, expand appearance, expand. And then their fill shapes, which will stay the same size. Um, but if you want to edit them further, that's probably not the best way to do because there's way more anchor points. It's going to be, you're not going to have a good time. It's going to be really annoying. So uh, just be mindful of stroke weight. You know, if you wanted to shrink it down that small, maybe you would make the stroke weight like, you know, 0.25 or like 0.1 or something. You know, so when you shrink it down, the line is still the same proportional in terms of thickness. So anchor point tool. Shift C. This is a very powerful, almost necessary, practically necessary tool alongside the pen tool. Because I could like, I could draw a line and then I can do Shift C and I can click the line anywhere and I can bend it. I can hold Shift to keep, you know, symmetrical curves or let go of Shift and I can bend it around and do whatever. If I don't want that point right there, I can hold Shift C, click the point, let go of Shift C, and now I can put it wherever I want. And then I can grab these trajectory lines and then do whatever I want with those. So it gives you a lot of power, a lot of control, you know? So let's get into, uh, let's just control G and ungroup everything here. Okay. So let's make this pocket really big. So I could, let's just drag and select all these and then hold shift to deselect everything else. Hold shift. Okay. So now I have this, I can pull this. Maybe I want it to be so big like that, but it distorts the dash lines. So hold shift, bring this up, bring this up. No, maybe I want these to be further out. So hold shift, hold C, drag this. And maybe I want to bring that further out. Maybe I want this to start further down. I grab this trajectory and I can bend it out like that. And then I do the same for this one. I hold shift C drag it closer, drag this further down, use trajectory, and try to line up, just fiddle with it for a bit to try to get them as symmetrical as you want. And then you can move those like that. I mean, it doesn't look good, but you, you understand the, the function of the tool. Okay, adding measurements. So to add measurements, there's lots of ways you could do it. I'm gonna talk about uh, my pattern pack, if I can remember which here it is so let's do a hoodie let's do the uh stealth hoodie so there are some no well yes but you want to start with the on body garment videos so uh let's say we've watched a couple and then we stumble across this stealth hoodie open up quicktime or mp4 whatever you play with it's like, okay, I'm looking through the videos, the model's wearing this hoodie. 
I watch him, you know, spin around, do a little dance, see what it looks like on his body with the hood up, you know, with the sleeves up. I think he raises his arms up just to see what the garment is going to look like. Right, let's say I like that. So, go back to my pattern pack folder. Go to where the files are. Go to Stealth Hoodie. And I'm a size XL, so I'm gonna get my sample in a size XL. So now we open up the size chart. And these are the sizes and measurements for the stealth hoodie, the video I just watched that I liked the fit of it. So now I could do, okay, size XL, you know, chest width is 27 and a half, sleeve 21 and a quarter, hood middle panel. As you see, there's a middle panel here, as well as I believe these have the pocket slits. Yeah, so this normal kangaroo pocket is not on the stealth hoodie, but the oblique pockets are. So that's what I want. I can copy these measurements exactly and send them to the manufacturer. Or in the video, if you wanted longer sleeves, just find the sleeve measurement. Okay, 21 and a quarter, let's make them a little longer. Let's make them 24 inches. You add, you know, two, two and three quarters, you know, inches to that. Or you want the chest to be a little bit longer, 27 and a half, make it 29 inches, add an inch and a half, add an inch, subtract an inch. You know, these are just templates. This is a foundation. So you know what the garment will look like in the videos. You can find the corresponding size chart to it, and then you can manipulate it further if you want. So that's one way to, um, you know, get clothing measurements. You could also go to your closet, find a garment that fits you really well, and you can measure it that way. You can go online to LA Apparel or Made Blanks or Rue Porter and find their size charts and then copy their sizes and manipulate those further. Um, and actually, in this pattern pack, most of these are based off of actual popular blanks and luxury silhouettes, you know, in the market. So the, where is it? The box hoodie is based off the LA Apparel hoodie. And the street hoodie is based off of the Rue Porter hoodie. You know, the measurements are changed a little bit. LA Apparel hoodies, I think they fit great, but the hood is really shallow, which I don't like. I like a big, deep hood. So I increase the hood depth in my uh, box hoodie measurement. You know, Rue Porter, sometimes when you raise your sleeves up, the, 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 the waistband of the hoodie goes up to your, your sternum, up to your almost your nipple, like not your nipples, but a little, couple inches below your nipples. You know, you reach for cereal on the top shelf. Uh, now your entire body is being shown to everyone, you know? So I reduced the length of right here, this thing. So the Rue Porter, this armhole, hole is just so long. So I just reduced it a little bit just so it's not pulling the waistband up when you're reaching up or raising. So just, I copied it after some, after different blanks, different, you know, garments and like popular brands in the market and just modified them a bit to at least, you know, what I like, what my taste is in, um, air quote streetwear fits. Okay. So that's how to add measurements and getting, uh, garments manufactured. I can't actually show you this because the product is like text and information. So we're on my website. So here is my VIP manufacturer list. It's V2. I just updated it. And if you click on this picture, you can see, you know, this has manufacturers, has graphic designers. It has sneaker and clothing manufacturers, people for denim, for puffer, links for shipping supplies, you know, different blank vendors. So lots of different resources. You buy it once, you have it forever. You know, you can try one or two manufacturers on here if they don't work for you, if, if communication's bad or you're just not happy with them, you can try someone else. If not, if you're sick of these, at the very bottom down here, I include a paragraph on how to find your own manufacturer too. So if none of these work, or if you're not interested, maybe you tried one or two and they, they weren't good to you. It left, it left a bad taste in your mouth. Like, ah, fuck, Siegs, I don't want to use his resources anymore. Then at least I tell you how to go about and find your own, right? So you could do local manufacturing, you know, Google screen, screen print embroidery services near me. Some stuff could pop up. Or if you want to do overseas, they can do, usually have more equipment. They actually usually do more stuff for you. Usually cost a little bit more too. Um, this resource is really good for that as well. So I went through all of this agenda. I didn't really design anything too much. I kind of just put these on here just to show you, you know, up close, we have some double knee panel pants. We have some denim flare pants some sweat flare pants. If we go back to the, let me get rid of this. 
Let's open up the uh, Maka pack again. Actually, yeah, and let's do the modifiers again. I just deleted those. Okay, so let's actually build something. So let's take this. Let's take uh, let's take this double hood. And all the modifiers are sized to be used for my mockups. So let's put this. Let's put this like right here. Command shift, select those, make it the same color as that. Now we have a double hood. And let's say we want to get these wrist sleeves with these uh, studs on them. So we select both of those, drag them into our mockup. We want to send them to back because we want them kind of like, you know, behind. Let's have that there, hold shift, keep it on the same plane, drag it over. Now it's like that. Z, drag, click drag to zoom in. Command, eyedropper, same color. Actually, let's make these uh, black, like an off black, black color. And then V, command, select eyedropper black. And uh, you know what, my vibe is changing. Let's do, select all those colors and let's make this black too. I'm in a dark mood, right? Make that black. I have this iridescent uh, text, iridescent reflective text I made a while ago for a different project. Let's say we just want this to be printed on top of everything, like that. It's kind of a vibe, kind of cool. And then I have my horse here. Let's make him white. Option, shift, drag, make it smaller. Let's have him, uh, well, first he has to be shown on top of the graphic. Let's make him smaller still. Let's put him uh, be a little bigger. Give him a little bend. And we can put him, uh, let's not put him on there. Let's put him down here. Let's say I have a little, little print, little, uh, wrist screen print like that. Yeah. Let's say we also want some drawstrings. So we shift, select both of these, drag over. So we can put one of them right there. The other one, shift, put it right there. No, click, click, command, shift. And we can make these uh, about like a yellow color. And these could be black. All right. And because why not, let's get this pocket. V for selection tool, hold command for direct selection tool, eyedropper black. I do it every time and I get better at it. Shortcuts are very useful. I don't expect you to learn all of them like right off the bat, but you know, keep those in mind with the I's and the V's and the P's and the, you know, so P, click clipping mask, or we'll select both command seven clipping mask. Um, shift C, drag this up. We want this sticking out a little bit. I'm not gonna draw the black line because I'm lazy. I don't, want, I don't care to do that right now, but you get the idea. And just like that, we had our mock-up. We had the modifier with the double hood, the drawstrings, the you know, print down here, this, the wrist sleeves with the studs on the knuckles. And since it's black, I can hold command again, click this shape, it's supposed to be the thumb hole, and I can just make this darker. And I can do, I can click that, command C, copy that hex code, which is just the exact color that it is. Come over here, hold, com oop, hold command, click that, click that, paste, and now that's dark too. And I'm gonna leave the studs like a gray silver color, cause I like that. 
I'm also gonna make that just solid black too. Okay, I think I covered most of the basics. Um, went over the mock-up pack, the other supplementary stuff, the assets, exploring how the mock-ups are made, how they work. Uh, you know how to color now, you can go back to that, just hold command, you can ungroup, go to the color picker, use the eyedropper tool if you're trying to steal color. Clipping masks are so versatile. I recommend making like, find another YouTube video that's just about clipping masks, and you'll probably learn stuff about them that I don't even know how to do but clipping masks are so useful. You need to be using clipping masks all the time. Whether your garment needs it or not, I, I don't know, just, just practice it all the time. Clipping masks are great. Add and remove seam stitches. I showed you the stitch presets and how to manually draw them with the pen tool, anchor points, shift C. You can also come up here, anchor point tool like that. Adding measurements with the pattern pack, you know, the Sieg's pattern pack, or you can, you know, find a garment you like in your closet, measure that, go to a website, steal there, measurements, modify them a little bit, getting the manufactured, manufacturer list, or you can go on Google, you know, look on YouTube and, you know, find, ask friends, go in discords and stuff. But I have a curated list too, but there's a million ways to get all this stuff done. I just try to categorize everything and make them all nice and neat and available in one spot. If it's not for you, it's not for you. You know, there's resources online on Reddit, on discords, on YouTubes. Um, so just do your due diligence, do your research. You may find yourself wanting to ask people who are more successful or further along than you, like, how do I do this? How do I do that? And getting answers that way is really nice. And like, it's a big relief off your shoulders if you're trying to figure something out or understand how something works and someone answers it for you. That's really great. But not everything will be handed to you too. So try to build and strengthen that skill and expectation of some things will be harder to learn or gain access to than other things. And you'll be happy you went through some of that turmoil too. Not saying you need to find that turmoil. Obviously you want to make this as as less stressful for you and as streamlined as possible, but there's always gonna be obstacles. So embrace happy accidents. You know, you're gonna fail, you're gonna do bad. You're gonna spend, you know, two hours designing something, a couple days designing something, and then you go to bed and you wake up and you think it looks like shit. It's gonna happen. I have hundreds hundreds of designs in here that i've just never used never even opened up the file again because i was like bleh i don't know what i was thinking you know i'm already like an hour on my laptop screen recording i'm an hour and one minute into this and i already thought about deleting this and starting over 10 minutes in 30 minutes in 50 minutes in because it's like fuck maybe i should have reset that I, sh I should have reworded this i should have showed this who cares you know i'm just judging myself it's fine you, you know you make stuff you put it out if you make a hundred things, there's bound to be five of them that are fantastic. There's bound to be 10 that are good or great, you know? Don't judge yourself and critique yourself too much. You're probably still learning. I'm still learning. I'm still learning every single day. That's why I gotta get on here and draw every single day, more or less. You know, I can't just be staring at a screen the whole time. But um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. Yeah. And um, that's been this video. If you guys have any questions, please, please let me know in the comments below. I'll try to get to everyone. Uh, I didn't, there's not really a whole lot of colors on here. It's just white, gray, and black. I didn't really use and design on everything. Uh, the main point was to just show you how things work and how to apply certain things to other certain things. I'm not really here to be creative for you. That's gonna be something that you're gonna have to muster up yourself. I just need to show you the tools and how to do it. So then once you know the equation, the ingredients, you can then think about what you're going to bake because you can't bake a cake if you don't know what's in the cake. And I'm showing you the, the ingredients. Now you got to make your own cake. You know, you got to substitute, you know, Nutella for peanut butter. You got to use brown sugar instead of sugar. I already showed you a recipe. You got to be creative with it, right? All right. Well, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my digital assets. I talked about a fair amount of them in this video, but I have a few more on my site. I also just released my first pair of sneakers, my first shoes. You can look at them here. They look beautiful and lovely. I only have like two dozen of them left available on my website. Production is currently being made on them. I should have them around December or January. It was a made to order. So if you place it now, you'll only have to wait a little bit, not as long as the people that already ordered it on drop day, but you know, they're going to be expected December or January. So if you want to support that way, if you like, if you think they're cool, 
great. Thanks everyone for always supporting. I haven't really done one of these longer form design videos in a while. Uh, if you guys like it, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions too, let me know in the comments. And um, yeah, thanks for watching.